Hi, I am Javis Daniel Guillermo, and today I will be doing our eighth experiment, which is project and or design problems, uh, specifically involving a stamping device, which involves three cylinders. So the description is rectangular blocks are stamped in a machine. Once the start push button PV1 is pressed, the workpiece is fed into the machine by cylinder 1.0 from a gravity feed magazine and is clamped in place by the same cylinder. Next, it is stamped by cylinder 2.0. After stamping, cylinder 2.0 retracts, followed by cylinder 1.0. Once the workpiece is fully declamped, it is ejected by cylinder 3.0. So I will create the PLC ladder diagram based on the description. So now I have finished creating my PLC ladder diagram based on the description. So if I simulate this, the cylinder A must first extend, followed by the extension of B and its retraction, followed by the retraction of A, followed by the extension and retraction of C, cylinder C. So that is represented as A plus, B plus, B minus, A minus, C plus, C minus. The plus sign represents the extension action of the cylinder and the minus sign represents the retraction action. So I have added a reset component to comply with the industry standards. Now the last three lines corresponds to the output where a solenoid is attached, which is which corresponds to the solenoid attached in the five two way valve in the cylinder. So that will be sol A for cylinder A, so sol B for cylinder B, and sol C for cylinder C. Now in the in the description, when we press the start button, this sequence must be achieved. So that would be that would require that S1, S3, and S5 is triggered before I push the start button. And it will trigger a latching condition for when A plus occurs. Next, when A plus occurs, F1 is activated and F1 here is closed. Therefore, when S2 is activated due to the extension of A of the cylinder A, we get we activate F2 or B plus. Now B plus is the extension of cylinder B and it will activate S4, which will activate B minus followed by A minus, C plus, and C minus. Now, when you get to C minus, F, it will activate F6 and when F6 is activated, it will 
close this contact. And since S5 is already activated due to it being at the retracted position of C, the cylinder C, we can reset the system after it has reached the final event in the sequence. So let us simulate the PLC ladder diagram. So as you saw, cylinder A extended. And while it is extended, B, cylinder B extended and then retracted. After that, uh, A, the cylinder A retracted. Then it is followed by the extension and retraction of cylinder C. So let us repeat that again. So the, I have successfully created a PLC ladder diagram based on the description. So now that I have finished creating the PLC ladder diagram, I will now create a function block diagram that is based on that PLC ladder diagram. So now I have finished creating my function block diagram based on the PLC ladder diagram. So this is the function block diagram of my logic module. And this is all based on the PLC ladder diagram shown here. I2 represents S1. I3 represents S2, I4 represents S3, I5 represents S4, I6 represents S5, and I7 represents S6. Now for the first condition, we can see that the start button along with S1, S3, and S5 is in series, indicating that they are they have an end relationship. So I use end blocks. Now, the latching, re the latching relay here represents the latching condition here. Next is S2, must be triggered, uh, and also the latching condition of the first condition. So that process will repeat up until the, the last sequence. Now for the reset, I use the reset for all the, I connect the, connected the, all, all the reset for the latching relays with S5 here and the latching connection here in the end, the end relationship of the latching connection here in S5. I connected a buffer to prevent any digital loops from happening. Now this not blocks and this end blocks represents the output. So for the solenoid one, it, it represents an end connection between F1 here. F1 is represented by the first latching relay here. And the 
inverse of F4, which is the fourth batching relay here. So that is the purpose of the not block. I connected them through an end block since they are in series and then attach them at the solenoid output. Now for solenoid B, the same process is used, but in F2 and F3, meaning the second and third latching relays. Now for solenoid C, I use the F5 and F6, which is the fifth and sixth latching relays. Now, if we are going to simulate this in the fluid sim, we can see that the resulting action of the cylinders is exactly the same as the ones from the PLC ladder diagram. So PLC retracted and stayed, PLC extended and it's stayed extended and followed by the extension and retraction of cylinder B and then followed by the retraction of cylinder A. Then it is followed by the extension and then the retraction of cylinder C. So let us repeat that. And now I have successfully followed the description from the experiment. So that would be all. Thank you.